Hey everyone, Andy Raffel from eTechnics.com and today we're looking at the MSI MAG Z490 Tomahawk. Let's do this. Behold the waters, wield the power of the gods with the MSI MAG Z490 God. With 1690 amp phases for incredible overclocking capabilities, and featuring dual Thunderbolt 3 ports, 10 GBE LAN with Wi Fi 6, and a PCIe Gen 4 expander card, you can achieve true enlightenment with the MSI MEG Z490 God. Now, before I get started with this kind of review of the board and showing you performance, there's something I need to tell you about the performance. We're actually filming this video just to make sure that it's all out on time before we've got the CPUs. So we will have all the overclocking and uh, all the benchmarks at the end of this video, but I can't really sort of comment on it too much, but we're hoping to have some more content uh, around kind of launch day where we can analyze stuff together. So just wanted to get that out of the way. So there are benchmarks in this video, so definitely stay tuned until the end. Uh, but yeah, let's get straight into it. So the Tomahawk kind of range from MSI has been a pretty much a, a, a firm favorite with the community. It tends to offer great features, really nice kind of, you know, simplistic designs, but enough for what you need for a pretty reasonable price point. The amount of people I know with a B450 Tomahawk Max is just, yeah, it's like it's going out of fashion. It's absolutely ridiculous. Everyone flopped and went and bought that board just because it offered such amazing features for a pretty reasonable price point. So hopefully the Z490 Tomahawk is no different. So price wise, it's gonna be coming in at $189.99 or around £194.99 in the UK. Uh, so it's a little bit more expensive than the Z390 Tomahawk, but when you compare it against say the ASUS uh, Strix, eGaming or F Gaming or whatever they're calling it these days, it's actually a little bit cheaper. So do you kind of, you know, suffer on the features and things and the design? Well, I don't actually think so. I think the design itself actually looks pretty cool. It's quite industrious. And again, comparing it to ASUS, they haven't fallen for the same trap as what ASUS have with their tough gaming, where they've pretty much put this yellow on there. This is just kind of plain, you know, black, gray, kind of silver accents. And, you know, that allows you to basically mod your system and do whatever you want with your system based on your choices. You're not restricted by having yellow on there. And I think MSI have done a really good job there. The design itself actually looks pretty damn decent. There's heat sinks where you want them to be, and there's no kind of unnecessary, unnecessary stuff where you don't want it to be. And the same goes for kind of lighting. There's no unnecessary lighting. It's pretty damn subtle. There's only one sort of bit of lighting, which is just around the PCH area, and it kind of illuminates from various sides. Now, obviously, if you do want to add some more lighting to it, then there are connectors on the board for that. So we've got uh, two four pins as well as two three pin addressable RGB headers. So you can add in your strips, your RGB fans, or even hubs that will allow you to extend out sort of above and beyond that and add as much kind of rainbows and unicorns as well, your heart desires. So the CPU socket, I mean, it's a, I guess a basic board in the grand scheme of things when we're comparing against the likes of, you know, the Godlike and the Ace and things like that. And because of that, the CPU socket's pretty open. The heatsink, especially the top one, feels like it's pretty far back away from the CPU socket. Same with the one to the side, although it is a little bit tall. Now, just looking at kind of preliminary testing and things like that, doesn't look like there's gonna be any issue with, you know, your larger CPU coolers, such as the Assassin from Deepcore or the Notua D15S. So MSI with a Tomahawk have gone slightly different compared to even their other boards as well as what we have from competitors. They've gone with a 12 plus one plus one power phase design. So 12 for the CPU and then one for uh, other areas of the CPU and then one I believe it's for uh, the graphics. So probably system agent and then, uh, and then for the graphics. So yeah, they've gone slightly different with that. In terms of getting that power to the CPU socket, we've got a single eight pin and a single four pin power connector. Now, in terms of the power connectors, it, in my opinion, it would have been nice to have kind of metal armor shielding around it, just to further instill that whole industrious look that the Tomahawk is trying to give. I mean, that's just my personal opinion, but it wouldn't have really cost that much extra just to put some, essentially some foil <laughs> kind of around these connectors, would it? Now, going back to the heat sinks around the CPU socket, there's nothing really too out of the ordinary. I mean, they don't make direct contact with uh, some parts of the components, but the rear one does kind of stem into the rear I.O., which is quite nice to see, especially on a board that's kind of priced at this price point. It's nice to have that built-in I.O. shield plate that all kind of looks like one big block. Again, it just kind of further instills, you know, the fact that it's more premium than, you know, what Tomahawk boards were in the past. Yes, you're going to pay a little bit more for it, but you're getting a little bit more for it as well. 
Other heat sinks on the board include the ones over the M.2 heat sinks, and this is the M.2 Shield Frozer, as MSI call it. This kind of, you know, stems into the PCH chipset and, you know, just again adds nice styling as well as function um, as well. And it is worth noting, even though this board is on the cheaper end of the scale, all MSI Z490 motherboards have PCI Express Gen 4 support. And trust me, them Gen 4 drives do get a little bit toasty. So it's nice having something like the MSI Shield Frozer on here just to keep it nice and cool. But we'll talk about the uh, PCI Express 4.0 a little bit more as we get onto the expansion slots. In terms of memory support, we have up to 128 gig of 4800 megahertz plus. Never understood the whole plus thing, but you know, that's just how they word it. Obviously a lot of that is gonna come down to the memory controller and what CPU you're pairing with it. But it's nice to know that the board kind of has that functionality and that power delivery to really sort of, you know, give you that I guess future proofing because right now there's no one really making men sort of memory on a on a big scale above and beyond 4400 megahertz. Above and beyond the M.2, uh, obviously there are two of them. We do have six SATA ports. We've got four over to one side and then two down the bottom. Personally, I would have liked to have seen them all kind of banked together. I don't know why they've split them up. Must have been something to do with just the general design of the board. But you know, six SATA ports for anyone who still uses SATA based drives, which I'm guessing if you're buying a board around this price point you're probably in that market where maybe you're using an M.2 drive and then maybe some larger hard drives for your games and, and things like that. For all your graphics card needs, there are two X16 slots, but it is worth noting that the second slot operates at X4 speeds. So sadly, SLI is not supported. Crossfire still is, but I'm a firm believer in kind of multi-GPU setups being a little bit dead in the water, at least since the likes of Pascal and, I mean, AMD, yeah. I just think buy a better graphics card, but that's just me. In terms of other expansion slots on here, there are two X1 slots. It is also worth noting that out of the two X16 slots, the top one does have metal shielding armor on here. The second one doesn't, but it does have these small kind of metal braces, which I guess add to the stability of the slot. I don't know. Surely they could have just added that onto there. Either way, it's nice to see it at least on one of the slots. Moving over to kind of your front panel connectors, we have USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-C. We have 3.2 to Gen 1, and we also have support for legacy USB 2.0 devices. So no matter what case you have, you should pretty much be sorted in terms of connectivity. So the rear IO is actually part of the board itself, which is really nice to see. I wish more motherboard manufacturers actually did this, not just on the high end, but bringing it down to kind of your mid range, which is exactly what we have here. You have to think in the grand scheme of Z490, this is a, an affordable motherboard. So what do we actually get on the rear I.O.? Well, there's a PS2 mouse keyboard combo port. Why? 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 <laughs> I don't understand why it has it. Above and beyond that though, we do have HDMI, we have DisplayPort, we've got plenty of USB, including 3.2 Gen 2, we have Type-A, we have Type-C, we have Gen 1. The interesting thing on this board is that it has gigabit ethernet, but it also has 2.5G, which is quite interesting really, the fact that it has it. I mean, you wouldn't expect that on a board of this price point of this caliber, but it has it. But the one thing it does seem to be missing is Wi-Fi. It doesn't actually have Wi-Fi. Why not? It's a Z490 motherboard. Yes, I know you could buy a Wi-Fi adapter, which is gonna cost you about five or 10 quid or dollars, but every other Z490 board we've looked at has Wi-Fi 6 AX. Why doesn't this? Yeah, so in favor, I guess, of losing Wi-Fi 6, we have two Ethernet ports. And it's nice to have, I guess, the 2.5G. We also have SB diff. We have our 7.1 channel audio connectors. And yeah, I guess it's pretty plentiful for what it is. So there you go. I mean, I personally would have liked to have seen Wi-Fi. I still don't understand why they haven't got it. But yeah, let me know what you think in the comments section below. And as I mentioned in the uh, kind of early part of this video, we are gonna be putting the overclocking results as well as the benchmarking in after I wrap things up. So uh, yeah, let me know what you think and uh, stick around for them benchmarks. And remember, we've got a lot, and I mean a lot more Z490 coverage, not just from MSI, Gigabyte, Asus, Intel, the whole works. So definitely go and check that out. And I will see you in the next one. See you later, guys. Bye-bye.